Okay, everyone. So we have been learning about clock model fractions and money model fractions. And today we're going to do a problem string and we're going to decide which model is the better model to use when solving problems. All right. So if we start out with one half minus one fourth, um, what we want to do is we want to think about our denominators. We have a two and we have a four, and we want to think about which denominators work with the denominators of a clock. So remember that we have a clock, it's out of 60 minutes, and then we have money, and that's out of 100 cents. So do two and four, do they go into 60 evenly? Do two and four go into 100? Another thing that I might do is I might actually refer back to the notes that we took in our previous problem strings. So that would be, remember we did this problem string where we wrote down the different um, denominators. We have two, we have four, we have 10, we have 20, we have 100. We also have fifths that we talked about. And if you remember the a fifth is um, 20 cents. So that was that problem string. Then we also did this problem string where we talked about um, one half, one fourth, one third, one sixth, and one twelfth, right? So those denominators there evenly go into 60. Now what I'm seeing based on these two previous problem strings we did is that two and four can go into 60 or they can go into 100. So either way, either model would be fine to solve this problem. So I'm going to show you very quickly how to do that using both models. So remember we have one half is half of a clock and then I'm going to shade that in. So one half, okay, we're gonna shade that in. And then a half of a dollar would be about there. And I'm gonna shade in one half. Okay, great, so we have one half on each side. But now we need to get rid of a fourth. So if you remember, when you're working with a clock, you're gonna make four equal parts. And then what I would do is I would just take away a fourth. And the same thing over here on this dollar, I'm going to make fourths, four equal parts, and then I would take away um, a fourth, one part of it. Okay, so what does that leave us with? That leaves us with one fourth, right? Because you have one, two, three, four, and that would be one fourth. So one half minus one fourth equals one fourth. Um, over here, we have one half minus one fourth equals one fourth left because you have one, two, three, four equal parts. So the same thing. But what does that equal in terms of the denominator out of 60? One fourth on the clock would be 15 sixtieths because that's 15 minutes. And one fourth on the money would be a quarter, two quarters, three quarters, four quarters would be 25 hundredths. So that's just kind of something to keep in mind. But the answer is one fourth and either of those models would have worked. So let's look at, and, and the reason why, if you're asked why, is because uh, two and four are both denominators of 60 or 100. Okay, so three fourths minus one fifth. So again, I want to think about um, do four and five go into 60 and 100, and they do. I mean, five goes both into 60 and 100, but if I go back, I mean, just knowing this, if I go back and I look at these denominations, I know that these are easy to work with. We have um, half is 30, a fourth is 15, a third is 20, a sixth is 10, and a twelfth is five. Now, a fifth, I want to show you that you can find out how much a fifth is worth on the clock out of 60 by just going five times what will equal 60? Five times 12. And whatever I do to the bottom, I also do to the top, and then I get 12. So, I mean, it is, it does go into 60, but then here's what's going to happen is you're going to be working with sets of 12 minutes. 
right? So you're working with sets of 12. So you're going to have five sets of 12. And you can do that, but I don't think that's as easy as working with the money model, where I know that if I did this to figure out how much money a fifth would be, I would say five goes into 100. How many times? 20 times. One times 20 is 20. So now we have 20 hundredths, okay? That seems a little bit easier to work with than working with sets of 12 minutes. All right, so I'm going to go over. I've decided that I'm not using the money model, that I'm going to use this model. And the first thing we have is 3 fourths. So I would make 3 fourths. I would shade in 3 fourths. Okay, and then I already did this work here, so I know that it's 20 hundreds. I need to take away 20 hundreds. So basically, I know that this fourth is worth 25 over 100. So I would just like, I would take out 20, and then there would be just five left over here. So what I would actually do is say, what is three fourths worth? One quarter, two quarters, three quarters. I know that that equals, and if I had to go back over here and look at this, I know that a quarter is worth 25. So that would be 75 hundredths. And I would take away a fifth, which I know is right here, which is 20 hundredths. And I would get 55 hundredths. So my answer would be 55 hundredths and the money model would be better because it's easier to work with sets of 20 than it might be to work with sets of 12. So you basically just have to explain your reasoning. Um, I want to look at this one because so far the money models have been what to work with. So now we have two thirds minus five twelfths and we're looking at thirds and we're looking at twelfths. And again, we want to think about, do those denominators go into these denominators? Well, I already know that 12 and 3 cannot evenly go into 100. So this one isn't even an option because 12 and 3, when you multiply um, and you do your multiplication facts, does not go into 100 evenly. So you're, you would be working with the clock model. Okay, so that's... That's what's going on with which model do you choose. Okay, so now I want to um, go into our work for today, what you're going to be doing for your math assignment. And this is going to be in your student book. So this is student book page 38. I'm going to go through a couple of with, couple with you, and then you're going to do the rest and take pictures of it and upload it to the assignment. So this is just like what we did the other day on the go formative with comparing fractions and then um, adding them together. So again, three fourths. How much is three fourths worth? Well, the first thing we have to do is we have to look at what is what is the denominator that we're working with here. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so we have eight equal parts. So three fourths. So even if I did this, I don't know if you guys remember, this is just like a great strategy. I need to find an equivalent fraction. Well, four goes into eight two times. You do the same thing to the top. Three times two is six. So I'm going to shade in six of these. And I'm going to write six. Oh, and it's three-fourths again. So I'm going to shade in six of these. And now we have another six. So we're going to add six and six together. And we're going to put them on these two strips. So if I went here, I know that this is six. And then I have to add the other six. So I go one, two, three, four, five, six. And so remember, this strip is one whole, and then this is four out of eight. So we have one and four eighths. We could simplify that to one and two fourths, as well as one and one half. So all of those answers would be correct, or some of you may have kept it in an improper fraction, which would have been, 12 eighths. But I do want to start um, turning those improper fractions into mixed numbers. Okay, so that's how you do that one. Now we have our clocks. Okay, so 
we're going to take one half and we're going to fill that in. And then we're going to add a six. And I would use two different colors to do this to help you. So one half and then we're going to add a six. Oh my gosh, I can't remember what a six is. So I'm going to turn back to page 34 where we did this. I'm going to go, oh, okay, that was 10 minutes. So I need to add 10 minutes to my clock. I'm going to do that with a different color. I know this is five minutes, 10 minutes. I'm going to shade that in. Okay, and then I'm going to go back and I'm going to say, well, that was 30 minutes. This is 10 minutes. So that would be 30 plus 10 is 40 out of 60. Okay, you can also simplify that. I can see right away, I can change that to four six if I divide the top and the bottom by 10. And then I could keep going. I could divide four by two and six by two. And then I would get two thirds. And you can kind of see like that looks like that peace sign or that pie chart that we talked about the other day. Okay, so that's what you're gonna do. So I've done one A with you and two A with you. You need to fill that out and do the rest. And then we have one more page. We're going to work on page 39. Okay, so let's go over this. It says, this clock is broken. The hour, the hour hand is stuck on the 12, but the minute hand can still move. So the hour hand is the one that goes here, and it's stuck on the 12, but this is the minute hand, and it can still move. So Marcus, I'm going to do number one with you. Marcus looked at the clock shown above and said, one fourth of an hour has passed. Sierra said three twelfths of an hour has passed. Allie said fifteen sixtieths of an hour has passed. The teacher said that they're all correct. So explain how this could be possible. All right. So what your job is here is to explain why it's possible. But then over here, you're actually going to write down three equivalent fractions for what you see on the clock. Okay, now these are three equivalent fractions. How can they all be right? Well, if we go back up to this clock and she says one fourth, we can do fourths. And we can see that there are four um, equal parts and one fourth is shaded. So yes, she is correct. So you would write that, you would write that out, okay? So I'm also thinking like, if I were to look at this um, and I thought it was 12, 12 what? It's 12, 15, right? So 1 fourth is equal to 15 out of the full 60 minutes. So yes, Allie is also correct and you would explain that. Now what about 3 twelfths? So again, if I can't remember what a twelfth is equal to, I'm going to go back over here and I'm going to look at my problem string on page 34 and go, oh, that's right. Twelfths are equal to five minutes each. And I know that five minutes are on each of the big numbers. And so that I can say one, two, three. There are three parts out of 12, three parts out of 12 shaded. So Sierra is also correct. So that's how you do number one. You need to actually fully explain that on your page. And then here, this is what they just did. They just found three equivalent fractions. That's what you're doing is finding three equivalent fractions for what is shaded. And if you need help, you're going to go back to page 34 in your student book to look at that problem string. All right. That's it for today. So again, you'll be doing page 38 and 39 in your student book, taking pictures of it and uploading it to the assignment. Let us know if you have any questions.